rose mount differential pressure and pressure transmitters use a capacitance sensing element. These are rose mount differential pressure transmitters. They are identical except one has a local indicator. This is the rose mount pressure transmitter. The operating principle and component structure are practically identical to those for the differential pressure model. We will concentrate most of our study on the differential pressure model. The variable capacitance sensing element is located approximately midway between the high and low pressure ends of the differential pressure chamber. This is a cutaway view of the rose mount delta cell. Note the sensing diaphragm. It is a stretched spring element that deflects in response to differential pressure. The high and low pressure sides are filled with silicon oil out to the isolating diaphragms. The sensing diaphragm isolates the high and low pressure fills. The isolating diaphragms isolate the process fluid from the silicon oil. Next, take a close look at the capacitor plates and the lead wires attached thereto. The capacitance between either of the plates and the sensing diaphragm is approximately 150 picofarads. An oscillator drives the sensor at approximately 50 kilohertz and 50 volts peak to peak. A change in differential pressure across the isolating diaphragms is transmitted through the silicon oil to the sensing diaphragm. This changes the position of the sensing diaphragm in relation to the capacitor plates, which in turn changes the capacitance between the sensor and the plates. The movement of the sensing diaphragm in the resulting differential capacitance is proportional to the differential pressure. The variable 50 K Hertz signal is demodulated by an eighth diode bridge rectifier. The diodes are D1 through D8 on this schematic. The output currents from the rectifier are related to the difference in capacitance between the sensor and the plates. Two of the output currents are algebraically summed. The net current is directly proportional to the differential pressure. The output currents through transformer windings 112 and 310 are compared in operational amplifier IC1. The output is fed to the oscillator control circuit. Since the sensing element capacity is variable with the applied differential pressure, the oscillator frequency also varies about the normal 50 K Hertz. We will not discuss the circuit in detail. This is an electrical block diagram of the circuit. The transmitter output can either be 4 to 20 or 10 to 50 milliamperes DC depending on which amplifier circuit board is used. This is a 4 to 20 amplifier circuit board. Now work exercise 1 in your workbook. The high and low pressure sides of the transmitter are stamped with the letters H and L respectively. By removing the four body bolts, the process flanges can be removed. This is the high pressure isolating diaphragm. Note that the process flange seals against an O-ring. 
the low-pressure isolating diaphragm is identical to the high-pressure one. Also, the process flanges are identical. The sensing unit, along with its attached internal wires, is called the sensor module. When assembling and before tightening, the process flanges can be rotated to the desired orientation. The transmitter has two electrical compartments. They are identified as the circuit side and the terminal side. The zero and span adjustments are located underneath this identification plate. The terminal side contains the signal and test terminals. The two wire signal and power leads are connected by polarity to the positive and negative terminals. The local indicator, when used, is connected across the test terminals. A diode across the test terminals maintains the circuit in case the local indicating meter should fail. The terminals must not be removed from the housing. To do so would break the seal between the compartments and destroy the explosion-proof construction of the transmitter. The DC power supply required to operate the transmitter is dependent on the resistance in the circuit. The 4 to 20 milliampere circuit will operate from 14 volts DC with no load up to 45 volts DC with a 1,550 ohm load. With a 24 volt DC supply, the maximum load is approximately 500 ohms. The 10 to 50 milliampere circuit requires higher DC voltages. The circuit compartment of the transmitter houses the amplifier circuit board, the calibration circuit board assembly, and the connector circuit board assembly. This is the amplifier board. It is held in place with three holding screws and a heat sink screw. We will later identify the other circuit boards. The Rosemount differential pressure transmitters will measure from 0 to 5 to 0 to 750 inches of water differential. Three different sensor modules are required to cover this range. This table shows the span limits of each of the sensors for the differential pressure modules. Note that the span rangeability is 6 to 1. For example, take the 0 to 20 to 150 inches of water sensor module. The minimum span is 0 to 25. The maximum span is 6 times 25 or 150 inches of water. A range change from 0 to 50 to 0 to 200 inches of water would require the sensor module to be changed. The Rosemount High Differential Pressure Transmitter is suitable for measuring the PSI differentials shown on this table. The operating temperature limits on the sensing element are minus 40 to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Over steam tracing or overheating by any means will destroy the silicon oil filled sensor module. The operating temperature limits on the amplifier are minus 20 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The transmitter will withstand an overrange up to 2,000 PSIG without damage. It is a good practice to recheck the calibration of any transmitter once it is severely overranged. 
The zero can be elevated or suppressed by turning the zero adjustment. It is best to check the instruction book for elevation and suppression limitations. Newer transmitters for the 4 to 20 milliamp systems have a three position elevation suppression switch on the amplifier board. The middle position of the switch will allow normal amounts of elevation or suppression. In order to achieve large elevations or suppressions, it will be necessary to move the switch to the elevate zero or suppress zero position. The amplifier boards by themselves for the older and newer transmitters are not interchangeable. If the amplifier board or the calibration board for the older transmitters need replacing with a new board, both boards must be replaced. The older transmitters with a 4 to 20 milliamp output have an A for the output code in the model number. The transmitter with C for the output code in the model number has a 4 to 20 milliamp output which is proportional to the square root of the input. It is called a square root of the delta P flow transmitter. Even though the square root of the delta P transmitter looks like the other transmitters, it has a different amplifier board, calibration board, and even a different calibration procedure. The volumetric displacement of the sensor unit for maximum differential pressure change of these transmitters is less than 0.01 cubic inches. Therefore, no reservoir pots are needed for any of the installation. Installation piping should comply with the same engineering standards we have used for other flow transmitters. The wiring is also standard in regard to the other two wired DC signal systems we have studied. Consult your local standards for grounding and shielding practices. Due to the fact that the sensing element requires alternating current to produce a capacitance signal, and that the AC signal is capacitance coupled to ground through the sensor, it is possible for some grounding methods to have this noise signal imposed on the load. This noise signal will have to be filtered for computers with sample times shorter than 10 milliseconds. Now work exercise two in your workbook.